I'm Simon Crompton, founder of PermanentStyle.com. In this video series with the Campaign for Wool, we'll be looking at care and repair of wool tailoring and knitwear, providing information, advice and tips. Luxury garments like this are also an investment and can last decades if looked after properly. During this series then, we'll demonstrate in person how to carry out our recommendations and suggest repair services and invisible menders. Welcome to part two of our series looking at the care of wool products. I'm here with Audie Charles of Anderson Shepherd Haberdashery and today we're going to look at the care and maintenance of wool and knitwear. Why do you particularly like well, wool garments? Well, <coughs> look at you and I. You've got Shetland, which we adore. I've got Merino, completely different weights, serving different purposes. But it's just a, such a spectacular product. Um, we love everything about it, that it's natural, from beginning to end, it's a wonderful product. And it's the first thing you're born into, mm. a lovely wool shawl, and you probably die in a wool blanket. <laughs> so it's on our floors, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's something that we take for granted. And more robust, sort of long-lasting than kind of cotton if you or take care generally. of it, yeah. If you take care of it, it'll last you a lifetime. Um, the actual abundance of textures, colours, the way you can knit it, mm -hmm. weave it, it's an incred incredible thing to have in our lives. Let's first of all, let's talk about washing, because I know this is something mm -hmm. that people are really often very scared about. I, like about. everybody, grew up t absolutely terrified of washing sweaters. Yeah. And it's one of those things, a life skill, that you should be taught, either by their mothers or their grandmothers or in schools. Men and women are all think, oh, I can't wash a sweater. Yes, you can. You just have to be careful. And again, if you use water, the temperature you probably put a new baby into, it's okay. not cold, remotely hot at all just that lovely tepid gentle water mm -hmm. a lot of manufacturers sweater manufacturers recommend using baby shampoo okay because you want to keep it as pure as possible okay um it's a very and soft, not put chemical kind of yeah version. absolutely yeah. again we don't want to put chemicals into it we want to keep it as soft and natural as possible you may also just get a very good wool wash that you can buy in most supermarkets okay but it's a therapeutic thing to do. It feels mm. kind when you do it. If you don't get a great pile of sweaters, you have two or three, put the radio on, some nice music, a glass mm. of wine on the side. It's a very gentle, soothing thing to do. So just mm. get that sweater into the warm, sud soapy water. And then, like when you see a, a cat that goes like this with its paws, <laughs> no ringing, just gently Sent squeezing like in. this. So you've got yeah. a big bowl, you're doing one sweater big at a time. Big plenty of water, yeah. one at a time. <clears throat> and sometimes I leave it to soak for about five minutes before I go and okay. caress it kind of thing. Okay. And then just do it for a few minutes like this, then take it out, refresh the water, rinse it lots till you feel the water is really, really clean, and then take your sweater. And I generally put it inside one of those mesh washing bags. Okay, why do you put it inside a bag like that? Well, either that, if you don't have a mesh washing bag, put it in a pillowcase with an elastic band around okay. the top, and then put it in the spin cycle of your washing machine. That contains the sweater and stops it going short and wide. Mm. Um, so I know we're talking, bag, it we're talking about bit. wool, but things like cotton, they will go shorter and wider. Okay. So contain them, and then when they're done, take them out, put them on a towel flat like this, press them into shape, or over a drying rack, but not with any weight to them. Yeah, because that's be kept. what's going to start We don't want anything right. to stretch. Okay. And just let them dry naturally okay. in a warm room, fresh air, overnight. Okay. And you know, do two or three at once, and it's a very nice thing to do. Yeah. yeah. I often do um, like laying out a towel yes. and sort of ro roll some it up. Some people, the you towel. roll it up like this and yeah. give it a good squeeze. And that'll take some that, of the moisture out. That'll take as well. some of the moisture out, especially if you okay. don't have a, a spinner yeah. of any kind at home. And still, so you're putting it in a spin cycle. Again, people might be nervous about using a machine like that. So just, yeah. I guess, err on the safe side. You know, try it a little bit to start yeah, with and make sure absolutely. you're happy. Give with what something you're doing. that you're not too worried about. Have a test run okay. on an old sweater that you think, well, I learned from this one. Yeah. And do you ever use washing machines? Like even the ones with a very, a very delicate cycle? I do, or and cycle? I know with modern mach machines, they're really, really clever. But there's something like when you're washing it by hand, you can feel the temperature, you know what you're doing. Mm, you, you feel more in control of yeah, what's going on. Yeah, it's like on. everybody's machines are different. Every oven is different. Mm. I trust my own judgment and my hands rather than... So if someone, if someone knows their machine very well and knows that can yeah, work then well, has confidence it, in it... Oh, totally, okay. totally, totally, totally. Yeah. And would you ever use a tumble dryer as well for Sometimes, a bit? if they're really weighty, again, in the, keep it in the bag. 
I just do it for a f literally a few seconds at a time and okay. then have a look. Okay. Till you can kind of judge. Again, oh, just that to keep feels under control. Yeah, you know yeah what but you're doing, no red hot dryers. Okay. And how about like really heavy kind of chunky knitwear, something like a that? A chunky knitwear like this one, to be honest, I wouldn't risk washing that okay. because it will become so incredibly heavy and pull out of shape with the weight. Okay. That, I'm afraid, I would have to send to the dry cleaner. And also because sometimes it's not the washing, it's the pressing. Mm, okay. of these, you know, a, a big sweater like this, I would trust more a dry cleaner, a good dry cleaner. And so pressing, clean you mean it. this is actually ironing you it? You know, the, the dry cleaners have those wonderful big steamers. Yeah. And I, I would honestly, I'd put this into the hands of a good dry cleaner okay. rather than uh, try and do that at home. And on the subject of pressing, so uh -huh. when you've, um, you've washed the knitwear, mm -hmm. you've rinsed it, you've got all the um, moisture out of it, you've dried it on a rack, so yeah. it's pretty dry, but it, I guess particularly slightly thinner knitwear could still be quite wrinkled. Yeah, I think also one of the things we didn't mention is it's probably a good idea to turn your knitwear inside out ah, okay. when you wash it. That to protect and then, the surface. Mm -hmm. And then I think when you come at the end, sometimes just literally pressing, it'll look fine. Mm. But you might just need a steam iron, put a clean tea towel or a cotton cloth between you and the sweater. Okay. And just literally. But you just, you're just pressing, you're not, you're not pressing like a no, shirt. No, no, no. It's just on top. gentle, just to get rid of any, you know, wrinkles or whatever. Okay. Um, it won't take much. And, and it's just, just the just steam putting, from the iron. Yeah, you're just yes. putting steam through it. You're not and trying it, to press no, it. No, gentle, no. gentle, just yeah. touching it up, really. And how often would you wash knitwear, do you think people should? Well, depending on how much you wear it. I mean, mm. generally we say to somebody, don't wear something every day. Give sure. everything, like your suit, yeah. everything a day off. Um, but like us all, you know, you've been working hard. Your sweater's worked very hard for you. Yeah. We all like a nice gentle bath yeah. after <laughs> a few days of hard toil. So if someone's wearing something, say, once a, dirt a week... Is a, dirt is then... a great enemy to yeah. any clothing because okay. we know moths love it. Yeah. Um, and we want to keep it smelling nice. Mm. Normally a sweater is over a t-shirt or over a shirt. So it's not, it's not generally smelly. next to your skin, yeah. so it doesn't get too pongy. But at the same time, I think every half a dozen washers, uh, wearings, I would give it a wash. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> the next topic we wanted to talk about was pilling. Now I know <laughs> the washing is going to help a lot with pilling, right? Because All people manufacturers, don't wash we all complain about everybody hates pilling, 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 and it seems to be the more expensive the garment, the more, expensive, more it will pill. And they always say, oh, washing, 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 washing. It, it does, of course it does, but it's yeah. a complete pain in the neck. Mm. Um, and it's one of the hazards of knitwear. It does pill where your arms, and like on your sweater, the friction, here, so the friction, or yeah. you're carrying something, a basket or a pet. Mm. So, I mean, I use this funny thing. It's just an emery board. Okay, so like a nail file. So for like a scarf, again, yeah. practice it on something, you know, you're not too worried about. Mm -hmm. But just keep the fabric nice and tight like this. Taut, okay, so hold taut. it tight with your hands. Hold yeah. it taut with your hands. And yeah. then literally, this is very, very fine. Just stroke like this. Okay. So very lightly yeah, running very over the surface. Yeah, very lightly running over the surface. And you'll see that you get these fine, huh. fine fibers that yeah. come off like this. Yeah. So you can see the result of that immediately. Yeah, you can. You see can. The pills Absolutely. Off as you well. can see. It's very delicate. That's what mm. we want, is mm. that. And then I'll practice on Simon. Mm. So we all get this on our sweaters. So you just literally. Take it off like this. Mm. This is on Shetland. Mm. Mine's merino, but it'll still fill a bit. But you can just tidy it up, really. Mm. I know there's those fancy machines that you buy with a sort of razor inside. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure they're absolutely fine, but this is really easy. It feels to like you'd be slightly more scared of using something harsh like that with a razor yeah. or with big yeah, kind yeah. Of claws. But it, I mean, this is not the kind of weight that you'd go and sand a door or a table down. No, no, no. It's delicate, yeah. but yeah. it is. It's very handy. Look, see. Mm. What if it's doing the job? Why do you need something else as yeah. well that's going to be yeah, harsh keep on it? Your right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I imagine there's a lot of people out there that get a lot of pilling on that point because they're not washing it yes, ever. Yes. They do wash but it, that's going to help honest, them if they do get it. When you tell people, oh, keep washing it, keep washing it, you can see that A, they're terrified of the whole word of keep washing it, keep <laughs> washing it, and you know they're never going to do it. Yeah. So um, much as we'd say just keep washing it, and it is true, it will help to stop the pilling. Yeah. But in an emergency, emery board. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So something else which is going to help uh, with the pilling, but also uh -huh. with the wrinkling, yes. is folding properly. Yeah. Right? So um, you don't want to kind of stuff it in a drawer or somewhere, but is there any particular way you should be folding it or anything? Well, simple, flat, mm -hmm. fold it over, 
put the sleeve so you've got that you're almost like giving it a press mm -hmm. like that comes very, sleeve, very naturally to someone who's worked in retail me. but <laughs> yeah it does but yeah. i mean it, it's it's not that difficult no and but i guess if someone's just sometimes home, if you put even a piece of like a magazine and yeah. you give yourself a template yeah sounds yeah, yeah. funny i know around. but if you go like this like yeah. this and you give yourself a sort of shape yeah so the sweaters could be roughly the same size when they're in the cupboard yeah and then give them room to breathe mm. you know none of us like to be squashed yeah um, and, this, and this, that's going to cause and that'll help keep it shape mm -hmm. and it looks very nice in your closet when you open the door <laughs> <laughs> all those people are slightly ocd and want yeah. everything to look perfectly neat that certainly is me yeah fantastic okay <laughs> and if you're traveling with knitwear again you just pack it and store it in the same way as pack well. it and store it in the same the, sa the same way i mean mm. pe some people roll Mm. And that's perfectly acceptable. But I think the nice thing is also when you travel, you can travel with different weights. Mm. It's layering. So if you're going to from a cold country to a hot country, a hot country to a cold country, you know that you can start with something very, very lightweight, like mm. the very light merinos, or build up to Shetlands and lamb's wools, and have layers because yeah. then you're covered. Mm. And, I, and I guess one of the worst things with storage is hanging it, right? On a Don't. Hanger. Don't hang it. It'll end up like arms like a sort of chimpanzee <laughs> with the shoulders drooping and yeah. the coat hanger makes a horrible mark. Fold everything. Yeah. Fold it, fold it, fold it. And that's yeah. most Don't dangerous hang. with if you've got like that sort of very really heavy They'll loose droop. weapon it where yeah, it's yeah. just going to grow You'll end up with the sleeves right? down to your knees. Yeah, okay. And it looks very, very sad. The next thing I wanted to talk about was steaming because I know some mm -hmm. people put steam like a clothes steamer, yeah. run that, so then you would hang the knitwear, you yeah. put steam through it, and that just sort of relaxes the fibres. It does, it, it kind of, it. it's like you in a steam room, you feel bristly, it, it refreshes <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, so if you've got one of those little handheld steamers or the big ones that come along like a vacuum cleaner, and again, you know, lift up the arms, go into all those nooks and crannies, yeah. and you can, you can sort of see the thing almost smile at you. Yeah, yeah. It looks just looks refreshed. Yeah, yes, you, without having to kind of actually press it. That no, no, drop the just on a hanger. Yeah. And don't put it on the garment, away yeah. from the garment, mm -hmm. and you'll just see the steam revive the thing. And add and a push. It, you could do that with a domestic yes. iron, push steam into yeah, it. I yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Just be careful of the hot water. Yes. And uh, you know, steam burns you, so you've got to be very careful about not putting your hand in front of the steamer because yeah. that's really serious stuff. And one mistake I've made is steaming like that and then putting it back when it's still a bit damp. No, no, so no. So you've got to make sure that. it's yeah. fully dry yeah. first. Just let right? it, you know, on a, just let it air. And last thing I want to talk about, I mean, we've, we've touched on this briefly before, but moths, and that's always oh. the first question, how to prevent moths. I don't think there's a cure, there's prevention. Okay. Uh, things like cedar balls, and the most important thing is never put anything away dirty. Okay. Your suit, trousers, whatever it is, moths love dirt, some bit of a sandwich that's been left mm. on the sweater. Uh, either have them dry cleaned or um, washed before you put them away. Some people, again, put them in plastic bags. Others put their stuff in the freezer to kill off the mm. moth eggs. Once the moth's there, it's too late. And it's mm. the stuff we can't see that's sitting in your closet all summer, some lovely pile of nicely folded sweaters. Yeah. And there's a nice family of moths munching away. <laughs> so. so that's a point about prevention rather than cure, is about yeah. preventing in terms of keeping it clean. Keeping it clean and keeping it things moving. Yeah. It's, I think moths just love it when things stay still. Yeah, they need, I guess, weeks yeah, or they months make to sit lay there, their eggs and yeah. a very happy little nest they made. Mm. So keep things moving, give them a shake, mm -hmm. uh, make sure they're clean. And again, and there clean are the products cupboard on the market like well. lavender and cedar balls. Mm. Some of them may work, but again, it's prevention. I think keeping things clean is the most important. Do you ever use sort of synthetic sprays or anything like that? No, I've never well? done it. Never no. done it. No. Okay. I'm not. Doesn't sound very nice. <laughs> but I'm sure there are products out there that work really yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> and why? Why do you not like putting things in plastic bags? I'm sure someone could feel like that is the one thing that protects. <coughs> it's, it I think it's just some people like the fact that their sweat is sealed up mm -hmm. and prevented from a moth getting in. But my yeah. theory is, what if it's already in there? Yeah. And so, it, I don't know. It's, 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 I just, yeah. just don't particularly like the plastic bags. But other people, yeah, they okay. do. It's just a matter of I choice. guess if it's damp at all, oh, when no you put way. it in there, yeah, no even way. the tiniest yes, bit, even if it's got a bit of sweat or something, yeah. that's going to no be really awful. bad for it It'll as well, smell so. very dewy. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Fantastic. All right, that's all the I wanted to cover.